Welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, just before we move on to all the very interesting conversations and interactions this morning, let's tell you about what happened today, the 16th of November um, in history. Uh, the first one we're going to be talking about is in South Africa. Um, this one is pretty interesting for me because when we learned about racism and when we hear stories about racism, a lot of times we imagine that it took place in the 16th century, in 1721, or in years that we you know a lot of our grandparents weren't even born, and our ancestors and those people you know probably were um, 16th, 15th, 14th century. But the de uh, desegregation of South Africa's beaches only happened in 1989. I was four years old then. Um, so I, I, I want to paint, I want you to get the idea of what I'm sharing this morning. It wasn't so far off that we dealt with racism. It wasn't so far off that the fight, you know, the appetite fight was, you know, on. It wasn't in 1722. It was as recent as 1989. It happened after months and months and months of rioting um, in South Africa. Uh, there were a lot of, of course, killings and arrests and the government trying to quell these protests. And then in 1989, President uh, F.W. Clerk, I believe, or F.W. the Clerk, eventually gave the order for the desegregation of beaches in South Africa, meaning that both non-whites, blacks and every other race were then allowed to visit the beaches in South Africa. Still took a while before schools and buses and some other uh, places in the country were fully desegregated. And even till today, you would still hear of a little bit of racism in South Africa and a few other places. Yes, indeed. Um, let's also talk about the fact that it wasn't before then there were already laws that were segregating uh, yes. the people as far back as 1913 as far back you know you have the um, what's the name of the law now you have the natives urban areas act um, we also had the railways and harbors regulation control and management act of 1916 uh, these are acts that segregated uh, the people that was uh, even that was even actually far away. in 1952 there was something called the natives abolition of passes and coordination of documents act 1952 in south africa that forced blacks to carry around their passbooks everywhere that they went or they will get arrested. And about that same era, there was a Population Registration Act that enforced non-whites in South Africa uh, to register. I mean, basically, the whole of South Africa to register themselves it, by it, it their race. It, it, it certainly was a dark time. Um, we're not completely out not of so the far woods off. yet. I was trying to read up, uh, but I mean, there's so much you can capture in a day or two. I was trying to read up on post appetite um, era in Racism. South Africa. Um, is it really post appetite era? Do we still have uh, pockets of racism and uh, segregation here and there? Oh, yes, yes. it, it still exists. But on the, on the flip side of it, we had Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. uh, he played a key role along with the president at this time who um, desegregated the beaches of South Africa. He played a role in eventually coming out with a constitution um, when both sides made concession uh, to uh, South Africa gained its independence and they came with a, a controversial... Okay, I think I'm getting, I'm reading the wrong thing now. In February 1990, uh, the then ANC leader, that's uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, was released from prison and he worked closely with President F.W. de Klerk uh, to draw up a new constitution for South Africa. Uh, after both sides made concession, they reached an agreement in 1993 and they would share the Nobel Peace Prize that year for their collaboration. So uh, something good did come out at the end of the day. Uh, continuous agitation, that, 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 that comes back again to um, keeping the fire burning. Yes, the if the government refused to listen, the people will make them listen by the actions that they take. They had peaceful demonstrations, they had all ways that they can try. You see pictures of black people going to places clearly marked white, white only. only and sitting down 
and you know doing what they needed to do, even though they get arrested uh, for all doing um, the, all of that. The agitations also led to the formation of the ANC and uh, the uh, United Democratic Front, uh, which was also formed in 1980. Uh, these were some of the um, um, positives of continued agitation. And like you said, there was even a time in South Africa that they agreed that they were going to continue agitation, agitating and get as many people arrested as possible to fill up the prisons and get the United Nations and other countries to get involved um, and force the government to, to take certain stands. It makes um, absolutely no sense living in a country in Africa and black Africans. I, don't, I, I even feel bad having to say black and white Africans, but <laughs> black Africans <laughs> are not allowed to visit certain places, certain schools, certain neighborhoods, certain the one, beaches. The one that, because I, I have this thing for this current wave of interracial couples, right? There was a time that was no luxury. You can't do it. You do it at your own detriment. You date somebody of a different race than yours, you are in big trouble. There was actually a law to that okay, effect. So. so a lot did happen in South Africa. That country has come a long way. It's quite unfortunate that with their history, we have cases of xenophobia now in recent times. And then you wonder, did these people actually learn something from the donkey years that they tolerance. suffered segregation at the hands of other people? And then you, you hear of them doing the same thing to fellow blacks. You, you really wonder uh, where we are headed. We're hopeful that the government there will continue to work hard to ensure that we do not get any negative report anymore uh, from South Africa when it comes to xenophobic uh, attacks. That was, yes. uh, that all of this happened on the, the this day um, in 1989. We're talking about the desegregation of South Africa, other issues we just added to it to, to give you a better background of what it's all about. Also on this day, um, Namdi Azikiwe, let me call his full name Benjamin Namdi Azikiwe, was appointed a Governor General um, of Nigeria. Uh, he was also coincidentally born on this day yes, in 1904. Now, if you talk about a detribalized Nigerian, this man, I was reading his resume and it was, wow, several masters. He has, I mean, we have Nigerians who have surpassed that, but as at the time, we're talking about 1930 something, when it was still, you know, a big deal. This man surpassed all of that. He was born in Niger State. He came to Lagos, he, where he learned Yoruba, and then he went to his native home, Anambra, where yes. he also learned uh, Igbo. So he was really a detribalized Nigerian. And initially, when I saw that he was uh, declared governor general on November 16, 1960, when we got our independence in, um, uh, in October of that same year, I was a bit taken aback. I was like, no. But then I realized that he became the ceremonial head of uh, the country uh, president in 1963. That's on the 1st of October. That was the time Nigeria became a republic. a republic from 1963 uh, so to for those who also may yes for those who also maybe have a little bit of um hesitation and you're not sure do we have our figures right yes we do um he was governor i think he was first um the premier of eastern nigeria he was elevated to the first to become the first president of the senate and then he became the governor general before he became um, the president of Nigeria, basically more of a ceremonial head. Uh, we should also mention here that um, why he was the governor general, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa was the prime minister uh, at the time. Both of them worked. It's also, Hello. I think we should talk about also the coup that occurred in 1966. Um, he was one of the few politicians that escaped um, assassination um, after that coup took place. That's his picture there. Look, at, that's one of the most uh, uh, popular pictures you see in Nigeria's of history. And, and, and 
Yeah, yes. I mean, a lot of people, you know, there's also those people who don't agree with his positions uh, with uh, regards to the Biafra war and uh, whether he truly was an all-round Nigerian. He changed he his allegiances was. after yeah, a while. After At a some while. point, he was the spokesperson of the Biafran yes. uh, movement. And then he flipped and said, no, I'm more Nigerian. He also had issues, I think, with Obafemi Owolowo at the time, because he felt he was not, he was more aligned to the North than he was to any other part of the country. This is somebody who has, who, I don't know how to explain it. He was uh, an Igbo man. He was an Alsa man. He was, um, was a Yoruba man. You know, so he had sentiment and attachment in these areas. It would be difficult, really, to uh, pull him out and say, yeah. this is where you belong to. You might not agree with his politics and some of his actions, but you cannot say this is a man who has not felt the pulse of Nigeria. Yes, so, and, yeah. Uh, for those who went to the University of Nigeria, Onsuka, he was also Yay, chancellor of the UNN uh, from 1961 <laughs> to 1966. Um, and of course, uh, became, like we also mentioned, became governor general of Nigeria between 1960 and 1963. He was premier of the Eastern region from, um, or rather, self president 1963 to 1966, premier of the Eastern region from 1954 to 1959. So, he has, he has an excellent extensive and a very beautiful resume. A very educated um, man. Let's let's fantastic. say it the way it is. A very, very educated and intelligent man from the soil in Nigeria. We still have a lot of persons who um, surpassed what he did, but I mean, we should give him credit for all that he was able to do for this country. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, posthumous birthday to the late uh, Namdi Azikiwe. Uh, he was the vice chancellor, he was the chancellor rather of the University of Lagos for a while. Um, he also joined uh, uh, the Nigerian People's Party um, in his B2, um, uh, become uh, president. He was unsuccessful, uh, both in 1990, 1979 and 1983. Um, we understand, I, I don't have the details on this, but we understand he left politics involuntarily after the 31st of December 1983 um, military coup. He died in 1996 on the 11th of May. Uh, may he still continue to rest in peace. And uh, if you have a spare time uh, much later this evening or at any time uh, during the day, just catch up. Read a little about this phenomenal man, what he did as a journalist. Okay, that's another part that uh, is interesting. I'm excited about him because, first off, he's from my part of the country. And he is, enlightened mind always have this att attraction for, you know. I know say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Enlightened minds have a technical for what now? <laughs> yeah, intelligent minds just gets you all excited. So, yes, uh, we celebrate uh, Benjamin Namdi Azikiwe on this day. Uh, he became the Governor General of uh, Nigeria, November 16. Okay, that's uh, what we have for you uh, when it comes to today uh, in, in history. Uh, we certainly, this is the kind of history we want to talk about. We don't want to talk about the kind of history, uh, the, segregation, the segregation of people in South Africa. Well, it's, a good thing a that, it's a good thing that we also, you know, uh, put that out there, you know, and let people know that these things happened. Um, let people know that it wasn't so far off. You know, this is as early as 1989. It's, it, 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 it's what, 30 years, you know, plus away. Um, and it should be a part of history. It should be things that people should learn from. Um, and um, learn and it's our job to tolerance. remind you exactly. <laughs> every day on the breakfast. So stick around. We have more for you tomorrow. For the rest of the week today in history, every other day, we'll come and try to unravel what happened and how we can learn from it going forward. We hope we have leaders who have the tenacity uh, to hold on to their belief while implementing positive change in the lives of those they lead. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.